Why Tesla is Dominating. This is Tesla Tuesday, Episode 2. This is Stocker Finance. I'm your host, David Scheuer, and feel free to ask me questions at Stocker Finance on Twitter. Just a little disclaimer here before we dive into the video. Um, I do own Tesla shares and have been long Tesla for a long time. That said, Tesla is an incredibly interesting company. No matter if you're a bearish or bullish, I believe Tesla will be an important part of business history and I enjoy following the story. So anyways, Tesla stock has seen a massive surge recently. In the past six months, uh, during its 52-week low from that massive... Uh, bear run there it's up almost a hundred percent and from the past five days it's up 32 percent in the past day which is today it's up over 10 percent which is an incredible jump in its stock price and it's kind of heading towards that thousand dollar mark that um it kind of failed to sustain last time so um, on top of this, investors know that Tesla is coming out on top, and I think this is one of the reasons that the stock price is increasing so much is because we're seeing the news switch to, and we're being, we're being swi people switch to becoming more bullish on the stock, and um, in, a, in a second here, I'll show you the short interest as well, which is decreasing. So overall, I think investors know that Tesla's coming out on top of this. They're comparing Tesla to their competition, and just they see that Tesla's so far ahead, and this coronavirus is actually going to push them even farther ahead. So here we have an analyst who is um, pulling their bearish view on Tesla, and a lot of analysts are bullish on stocks like Tesla, Netflix, and Zoom. These are just some news articles that have uh, been popping up like crazy lately. And so here's the short interest here. This was in the last video as well. So um, this isn't exactly a fully updated graph. It might be a little different now since it's been about a week since then. But the short interest is de decreasing substantially. And I, said, I, I uh, suspect it's down even further now. So Tesla to move ahead with commercial launch in Israel. And Tesla's claiming more power for Model S X plus this new Cheetah launch mode. So what does this have to do with what I was just talking about? Well, it shows that the analysts realize, the analysts realize that Tesla's moving so far ahead because Tesla's still doing all this stuff. I mean, they're still innovating. They're still releasing new products. They're launching commercially in another country, which is pretty huge. So they're doing a lot of, um, you know, different stuff. And they're adding a lot more to their company here, uh, despite what's going on. So the fact that they're continuing to innovate. And here we have Tesla's robo-taxi fleet will be functionally ready in 2020. So the fact that they're continuing to innovate is a really good sign uh, for Tesla, especially during this coronavirus. So here's just a list of things that Tesla's doing in 2020. The list goes on. There's just too many things to mention. It's going to be a huge year for them, and it's going to be really interesting to follow along. But I'll just read through this really quickly. So we have the robo-taxis I just said, and functionally ready does not mean it's going to be on the road and the system's going to be fully in place. That'll probably be for a couple more years or a little bit farther down. But it does mean that the system is that, you know, it's functionally ready. It's not necessarily the product isn't ready for launch. All right, so then we have the Model Y production, the China uh, production ramp, and long-range Model 3, which they're bringing back, the Plaid Model S. And the interesting thing about the Plaid Model S is it's a very few changes to the Model S, but there's a large price increase. This is actually going to generate a much larger profit for Tesla on each vehicle they sell um, in terms of selling the Plaid Model S because they really don't have to change the vehicle much. It, all the components are really staying the same, but they're increasing the price substantially, which means they're going to have... Um, much larger profits. So then we have the 2020 Roadster, Tesla Semi Production, which is supposed to it's supposed to be at the end of 2020, but I'm I'm guessing this is on Elon Musk time, which means it's probably going to be more like 2021. Then we have catching up on the order backlog, like I talked about in the last episode. We have Tesla Battery Day, which is going to be delayed, but apparently it's going to be streamed online. Um, they aim to get full production back by May 4th from their U.S. factories, which have been temporarily shut down. They're increasing their full self-driving price and adding more features. And they're uh, changing the Fremont factory to increase Model Y production. So now let's look at the competition compared to Tesla currently and what's going on in the news with this competition compared to what's going on in the news uh, with Tesla. So what both of them are doing. And it's it's quite hilarious almost in the massive uh, difference in Tesla's competition compared to Tesla right now. It's pretty ridiculous. So let's start with Tesla here. It's kind of similar to what I just read, the list of things they're doing. They're ramping up Model Y production. China sales hit a record high um, in March. Uh, they beat Q1 delivery expectations by quite a bit. China production ramps up, innovating rapidly with full self-driving, and they're actually raising the full self-driving price as well. They're releasing Plaid models, as I said. They're updating modes as well as the software as they usually do. 
And uh, they recently dominated the Kelly Blue Book Awards. They got five out of six. The only one they didn't get was the most trusted. And, you know, that kind of, a lot of people are disagreeing with that, but it also makes sense. Tesla's not as old of a company. It's not as, you know, by a lot of people, they trust the older companies that are really established that have been around for a while. I think Lexus won that award. And that kind of makes sense to me. I mean, it hasn't been around as long as Lexus. It seems logical to me that uh, it wouldn't get the most trusted award, but every other award it got. So it has significantly less debt in the competition, and we'll discuss that a little bit. And its bullish sentiment is increasing substantially. Now the competition. So first off, Rivian, which is kind of a small electric vehicle startup. It's had some investors from, had a huge order for um, delivery vans, electric delivery vans from Amazon, which was big. It's backed by Ford as well as some other uh, competing companies to Tesla. But they decided to delay their vehicle deliveries till 2021. Uh, Ford released a profit warning and is guiding for a Q1 loss as well as is suspending its dividend. Uh, GM stock got a major downgrade. There's dividend fears amongst almost all the legacy automakers. They have a massive amount of debt. Um, they're not really innovating. They are releasing some electric cars then and there, but most of them are just concepts and most of them, the stats don't match Tesla's cars at all. I mean, they're like years behind. Um, the only one that I've seen that's done a decent job here has been I do have to give it to GM with the Chevy Volt. Um, I've driven it. It's not, you know, obviously it's not comparable to the Model 3, but it costs significantly less and it gets the job done. It's an electric car and for just driving around the city and doing, driving around short, you know, areas, you're not, you're not racing in that car or anything like that. It's not meant to be extremely fast or whatever, but it's an electric car. It's cheap and um, it's been fairly well. Uh, I've driven it quite a bit. So that's the only company I've seen has done pretty well there, but they're also not making a ton of money on that car. So then they're also sitting on lots of inventory due to their brick and mortar closures. Um, all the dealerships, people can't go in. There's a couple that I've seen open recently, but most of them are pretty much closed. Or if they do have people working there, they're probably operating at a loss right now because no one wants to go out and um, go to a car dealership and engage in you know personal conversations with the salesman. Which means, you know, if you're trying to sell a car at a car dealership, you usually have to be pretty close to the person, which people are afraid of right now. And a lot of people are saving money as well. They don't. It's not really the time for buying a new vehicle like that. Um, so now let's look at the Tesla debt compared to other automakers. And go back and watch the last episode, episode one, uh, for more on this. So I'm going to go over this really briefly. Basically, every single legacy automaker has an absurd amount of debt. And Tesla's is very minuscule compared to theirs. And most of these legacy automakers um, have less cash because of that. Because most people are, as I said, not going to dealerships and purchasing their cars. Because uh, they don't want that face-to-face -face interaction or they're trying to save money. On top of this, they're going to have to take out more debt to keep themselves afloat. Which is adding to their debt bubble, which is not sustainable at all. Um, I also don't think Tesla will need to take out more debt. And so far with their... You know, sales ramping up in China, their deliveries are increasing, etc. Uh, they and their order backlog that still needs to be filled on a lot of different uh, vehicles, especially the Model Y right now. Um, you know, I, I don't see Tesla needing to take out more debt or getting bailed out, uh, at least in the near future. So now let's just look at the, some of these other uh, legacy automaker stocks because a lot of them are increasing in price as well. You know, in the past month, BMW is up three percent. Definitely not the same as um, Tesla, which is up over 30%. But, you know, they are kind of going with the market here. Uh, we have GM, which is up. Oh, sorry, it's up more than 3%. That's up 3% today. It's up significantly more than that. We have uh, GM as well up over the past month. Um, same with Ford here. But one thing I want to look at with Ford, and this is going to go back to talking about its debt. Look at Ford's market cap, $20.94 billion. So Tesla has 13 billion in debt, but its market cap is over 130 billion. So when you're comparing how much the company is worth to how much debt it's ha it has, it's not horrible. Ford, on the other hand, if we uh, go back to the kind of the list of debt we had here, has a long-term debt of 154 billion. If its market cap, and we'll round up its market cap for the sake of Ford here, is around 25 billion, 154 billion in debt divided by 25. Uh, which is Ford's market cap, means that its debt is 6.16 times greater than Ford's market cap. So it is six times more debt than what the entire company is worth on the stock market. 
Now, if this was a mining company or a large real estate construction company, perhaps this amount of debt would make sense, but it is not. It is a auto manufacturer. This is a scary amount of debt for Ford to have, and this is really going to hurt them, especially right now when their sales are going to hurt. They just dec Their guidance is not looking too well. Uh, they just cut their dividend probably to save money because of this and because of the uh, decreased sales. It's not looking too hot for Ford. Um I don't know. It's going to be tough. Will they get bailed out again? We'll see what happens. But, you know, six times your market cap worth of debt is not something that you want to see in a uh, in an automaker's uh, company. That's for sure. So next up, we have a little piece of news here from uh, this is from Bloomberg who wrote this article. But uh, Tesla wooed by one billion Missouri package for Cybertruck plant. So where are they going to build the Cybertruck plant? And we're kind of seeing an Amazon situation here. Obviously, uh, Tesla didn't do the same kind of major competition that Amazon threw out there uh, about a year ago when it was deciding where to build its headquarters or its second headquarters. And so many cities were just giving out ridiculous incentives to Amazon, just billions of dollars in incentives, tax write-offs. Uh, some cities were even like, we'll rename our city to Amazon if you move here. I mean, it was pretty ridiculous, the number of things that they were trying to give out in order to get Amazon to move there. Because if Amazon placed its headquarters in your city, you're going to get, you know, your economy is going to get a huge boost. People are going to get, there's going to be a lot of good jobs created, thousands of jobs. This And then from that, you're going to get restaurants opening up around the campus. You're going to get new apartment buildings. More people are going to uh, build houses. Real, the prices of real estate is going to increase. And the value of that city overall is going to increase substantially, which means you as a city are going to collect more in taxes as well from all those workers moving there and earning an income, etc. So it is a really good thing for a city's economy to have a big company like this move and provide jobs and uh, more tax revenue as well and just value to the company. But let's go ahead and read through what uh, the city and what Missouri is giving them for having this uh, for having the Cybertruck plant there. So. Part of uh, the city is Joplin, by the way. So the city of Joplin's appeal is cheaper labor, and the median for hourly earnings in the city is $27.86, which is significantly less than Austin, Texas, or Nashville, or Tennessee, which also may be vying for Tesla's attention. Joplin says Tesla will be able to save $75 million annually on payroll compared with other manufacturing and engineering wages paid in those other markets. Um, then on top of this, um, and I kind of read this backwards here for some reason, but the city in Joplin, which is near Missouri's uh, borders with Oklahoma and Kansas, is seeking to tempt the electric car maker with $1 billion in incentives and savings to build a new factory for its futuristic Cybertruck. Joplin is offering a 1,042-acre site at a 50% discount, uh, according to a website. It's built, near, uh, it's built to court the company. Uh, sorry, I am just choking up here on words it's built to, it's built to court the company led by billionaire elon musk it's also co uh coaxing the car maker with a hundred percent tax abatement for 12 years and various other tax breaks and incentives the city which has uh which is home to a pair of industrial battery production facilities has taken its campaign directly to musk with joplin area chamber of commerce president toby teeter appealing to the chief executive officer monday on twitter tesla did not respond to a request for comment on joplin's proposal this is very interesting, and if we go back to this as well, um, you know, they're giving a lot. I mean, saving seventy-five million dollars on payroll, which is huge, and then getting a massive discount on the initial uh, cost of land, as well as a massive uh, uh, a bunch of tax breaks and other incentives. And I'm not sure what the other incentives are, but I'm assuming it's probably just a bunch of different things related to taxes, um, related to just you know regulation etc around that area and there's an industrial battery production facility nearby which is uh, really interesting as well so will tesla take take this offer up i kind of think so this is unless a city offers an even better offer which one could because it could be worth it for those cities to offer even more than this and uh, i think we're going to see kind of an amazon situation which where to put the cybertruck plant especially with just you know um all these incentives that they're giving out this is a good thing for tesla and uh, this is another reason why its stock price is just surging right now because if cities are offering this much to tesla to build its factory somewhere uh that's good news for them anyways i have some questions for you guys as we close this video down 
So what are your predictions for Battery Day? Tesla Battery Day is coming up pretty soon. It was delayed, and it's going to be streamed online, I believe. So what are your predictions? What do you think they're going to release? Uh, what do you think the news is going to be, etc.? How will legacy automakers adapt to compete with Tesla? Obviously, they're going to have to adapt. Tesla's just getting an even greater lead by from this coronavirus. Um, this is not the coronavirus is not hurting Tesla as much as it is these other automakers, and it's really just giving Tesla an even further lead ahead of them in the electric vehicle industry. And this isn't even counting the fact that Tesla still has other parts to its business besides um, it, it being an auto manufacturer, such as the energy sector, which is growing as well and innovating. Um, it's random questions, the cyber truck ugly or cool. We we're just talking about it a little bit. So I know it's a very controversial topic, but I'd love to know. And are you bullish or bearish on Tesla and why? Some people are saying the stock price is out of control right now. And their theory is that, oh, it's just kind of getting pumped up with all this news. It's going to crash back down like it did previously. Or is this backed up from all this news? And is the stock price, is Tesla actually worth significantly more than this? Uh, whatever it may be, just let me know why I'd love to hear your opinion. Anyways, I know my words are kind of jumbly today. I need to drink some more water for sure. My throat's a little sore. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And make sure to check out these videos as well as use my Robinhood link to support the channel. It really helps me a lot. Uh, make sure to hit that bell icon. I'll be releasing another video soon. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.